This is the lecture on statistics used in assessment in special education. My name is Dr. George Giuliani from Hofstra University, and this is part four of the lecture. And we left off on the last one talking about the normal curve and the percentages under the normal curve. So at this time, you should be able to draw the curve, label the curve, and understand the percentages under the curve. But let's talk about now the importance of the normal curve. Now, how does the normal curve help you? Well, let's take an example that you'll come across numerous times in special education, and that's IQ. Now, as you may be aware, the mean IQ score on many IQ tests is 100. Average IQ is 100 when the standard deviation is 15. And the most commonly used IQ test today is the Wechsler test, or better known as the Wechsler Intelligence Scale for Children, known as the WISC. For adults, it's the Wechsler Adult Intelligence Scale, that's known as the WACE. But we'll talk about the WISC, the Wechsler Intelligence Scale for Children, and currently, as I give this lecture, it's in its fourth edition. And this IQ test, the most valid and reliable IQ test on the market, is the one most often used in school districts today. Now, what do we know about this IQ test? Well, just like many IQ tests, the mean on this IQ test is 100, and the standard deviation is 15. So 100 is average with a standard deviation of 15. So if you look at the normal curve, IQ on the Wechsler scales would be distributed as follows. Now, to see this curve, by the way, in this lecture, again, go to your textbook and view the IQ normal curve when you're following along here. Uh, the curve can be found in the chapter titled Basic, Stati uh, Basic Statistical Concepts, and for the fourth edition of the Perangelo and Giuliani textbook, it's chapter three on page 47. You'll see the IQ normal curve. It's also on a handout that I've probably given you, uh, so take a look at the handout. But you should have in front of you now the IQ normal curve uh, diagram. And if you look at the normal curve, when you look at what this curve is all about, you'll see the importance of it. Let's talk first about gifted programs. Do you know what the requirements are for most gifted programs regarding minimum IQ scores, those that have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15? Well, by looking at the normal curve, you may have figured it out. The minimum IQ score normally to get into a uh, gifted program is 130, 130. And you ask yourself, okay, well, why? Why is it 130? Well, we didn't just put, pick that IQ score out of a paper bag. We didn't pick this score, you know, just from out of nowhere. Because gifted programs will take only students who are two standard deviations or more above the mean score. In a sense, they want only those students who are, whose IQ scores are better than 97.5% of the population. If you look at the IQ for giftedness, if you look at the IQ for normal curve, only the top 2.5% are two standard deviations or more above the mean, which means 97.5% of the population has an IQ score below 130. So to have an IQ score of 130 and above puts you in the top 2.5% of the population, and this is what gifted programs are often looking for when selecting students. On the same end, but going to the other end, how about intellectual disability? This is what we formerly used to call mental retardation. What about intellectual disabilities? What is the minimum IQ score that one needs to obtain in order to obtain the classification of intellectual disability, or again, as we used to call it, mental retardation? Well, using the Wechsler scales, the classification for, intellect, or for intellectual disability can be determined if the child receives an IQ score below 70. Again, look at the curve below 70. Why 70? Again, we didn't just randomly choose 70. If you look at the normal curve, you'll see that only 2.5% of the population has an IQ score under 70. That means that 97.5% of the population has an IQ score of 70 and above. And therefore, when you're talking about classifying a child with, seven, uh, with an intellectual disability, it becomes very clear that that's going to be those with IQ scores in the lower standard deviations, in the bottom 2.5% of the population. Again, we're saying uh, why 70 is that in order to receive this classification, you have to be at least two standard deviations below the mean. 
In a sense, the child's IQ is only as high as 2.5% of the normal population. 97.5% of the population has a higher IQ than these particular children. Let's do a practice problem here. Uh, suppose in school district XYZ the mean score on an exam was 75 and the standard deviation is 10. Draw the normal curve for this distribution and then based on the curve what percentage of students scored between 65 and 85, above 85, between 55 and 95, and above 95. So again here's a practice problem. Mean score is 75, standard deviation is 10. Draw the normal curve for this distribution and after you draw the curve, what percentage of the students got between a 65 and an 85, above 85, between 55 and 95, and above 95? At this time, I'll ask you to stop the video, do the practice problem, and then once you are done with the problem, turn the video back on and go on to the next slide. When you review your answers, what you should find is that the number of students or the percentage of students between 65 and 85 is 68 percent above 85 is 16 percent between 55 and 95 is 95 percent and above 95 is 2.5 percent so again go back to the practice problem make sure that you got all of these correct there are practice problems in your textbook uh, and if you have any questions on this or you're unsure or that any, of any of this, if anything is unclear with anything regarding standard deviations, normal curve, drawing the curve, percentages under the curve, and then being able to calculate them, please be sure to email me or call me so we can talk and uh, make an appointment to make sure that you get this. Uh, this ends part four of the lecture on statistics used in assessment in special education. You can now go on to part five where we'll be talking about correlations.